California Chairman Walter the Director. And I wish I could uh, learn more uh, to this workshop uh, from myself and for the uh, with the uh, American societies. Uh, but I think uh, until I know how to uh, hit the baseball and play the basketball or football as well like the American, then I will be American.
remark. I, you know, I, want, I want us to really actually uh, uh, have a chance to talk about real, real life examples. You know, Jane mentioned a little bit of her coalition work in, in San Francisco, but uh, it's not necessarily just Pan Asian, but it's something that maybe we could draw from and, and learn, learn more about how different groups can work together. Um, but thanks, y'all. Uh, thanks for, for doing the introduction. Hey, could you break down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, I just wanted to, like, you know, there's only so much that we can give uh, or, you know, share with you in, in 50 minutes. And so, um, we want to just give some, some really basic uh, terms put out there, like, give, give, give to you all, and then also try to have that time for us to, to really have some uh, good, good uh, discussion, if, if possible, in, in, in uh, 40 minutes. <laughs> so, I want us to define, like, coalition, you know, so that we're just on the same page. And the way that, like, uh, my organization uses coalition is we, we define the coalition as, as either a group of organizations or individuals that come together, that form, uh, around, some kind of, uh, around some kind of principle, around some kind of issue, to have a, you know, a stronger voice. Or a, uh, that's one way of putting it. Another way of putting it is it's a group of individuals or organizations that come together to build a larger unified body. And so there has to be some kind of, for, for us there has to be some kind of reason for, for people to come together. And if people don't know why, then there might not be a strong reason to have, uh, to build a coalition or try to have a coalition. But there's numerous reasons why. I mean, there's, there's examples that we can look at right now that's going on, uh, not only in the United States, but around the world. So that's, that's our question. Uh, a larger, you can say larger unified body. <laughs> larger unified body. So that's, that's our definition. That's, I don't know if that's Jay's definition, but that's my definition. <laughs> And so, we wish, I just wanted to put that out there, um, and then from here, Jay, what are the basis of coalition? Uh, do you want to say so Yeah, well, I mean, it's good to hear from you guys what, either from your work or what you imagine the basis of coalition to be. You guys are a two, like, youth workers, so we're going to be very interactive and writing a lot. <laughs> well, what are some basis of coalitions that you've seen or that you can imagine? Why would people come together? Good. Uh, like, there's just a like, shared issue, a shared concern, mm -hmm. problem that faces all the communities. Right. Shared issue. Shared concern. Or concern, yeah. Since this is a uh, pan ethnic thing, you know, that's another, another way. <laughs> shared issue. Any, what other ways? Shared culture. Shared culture? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's good. I'll also say, like, um, shared space, and I mean that by locality too. Um, same city, same state. Same nation, all of those things. Same neighborhood. Yeah, same neighborhood. Us, um, there's actually a book on on Pan Asian American organizing written by Yanni Spirit. It's a great book. You guys should pick it up. One of the things that she talked about for the basis of coalitions is that um, that groups often come together because they have a common or shared history, experience. or a shared faith. One of the things that I find most interesting about the shared faith is that when we talk about Asian American communities, what's one of the major difficulties that people always talk about? I mean, do we have necessarily this? Right, a shared history. Where we come from, Asia is a very diverse continent. Very, I mean, there are commonalities in our history, but very diverse history, very diverse experiences. And somehow we're randomly all kind of thrown together when we're in the U.S. And everyone's like, oh, you got to all work together because you look alike, right? <laughs> <laughs> or you're from the same regional area. It's a very abstract kind of definition of who our identity is. It's not real, right? Asian American is a real thing. But what I find interesting about what she said at that last part is the idea of a shared faith. So we may not be the same in terms of who we are, where we come from, 
But because of how people perceive Asian Americans, we share a common fate in this country. Right? You guys all feel what I'm trying to say. So it's, it's how other people perceive us. So in that, for that very reason, because we're going to probably end up in the same lot in this country in terms of how the government perceives us or society perceives us, we got to kind of work together because we want to shape where that fate's actually going to be at. Right? So that's, that's what I was going to say on the basis of coalitions. And with coalition and you know, the building of a large unified body, uh, Tony talked about it uh, briefly at the beginning of this, this workshop and how and this is just basically we're just laying it out, laying out the, the, the platform and how like with, with building a, unit, a larger unified body to, to, that has these certain sorts of uh, you know, commonalities, then what, what is hoped is that that coalition would have greater power um, at the table. Um, I have examples in my head because, like, we're all talking in abstract right now. But are there any are there examples right now that you all can see, either that where there needs to be coalitions or that there are coalitions working right now? Real life. Uh, yeah. Um, uh -huh. That's Is that
would, would you say that the advantage is that it made, it, it made the issue stronger? Yeah, I think so. It's, it's being more credible. Mm -hmm. You have other people that are not of the same ethnicity in the five years as well. I, from what I remember of that, that issue, it was, it was, there was the issue about race. Like, so yes. I also thought it was a racist kind of process. Yeah. And so people of color, uh, immigrants especially, have, you know, they have that shared history of like, racism in the United States. And so that's where the, the unity was, perhaps. Adding credibility. What are, what are other advantages or reasons to form a coalition? Greater access to. Uh, uh -huh. Greater access to resources. Where, what do you mean by that? So whether it be you know, the sheer numbers of voters or mm -hmm. uh, you know, greater donor base or mm -hmm. you know, facilities, you know, speaker. I'm sorry, somebody in this room. Okay. Um, political power for this agency. Uh, what do you mean by that? By which one? Political, political power. power. Political power? Um, how would how would coalition building contribute to political power? Well, for instance, an example of the Kim Kwan campaign is it's a very political business situation with education, superintendent, and the fact that you know the groups organized to show that they're very much involved in this and that uh, you know do respect and speak to the communities. So you know, just decisions on part of policymakers are those supposedly going to show makes more you know it's more thought into it or to really serve the community supposedly. So, so there's a potential to, to, to there's a potential to gain political power for voices that haven't been heard. Um, I just was trying to think about that. Mm -hmm. I could just voice an agency too that like voices that haven't been heard are just really overlooked people. You no know, communities are overlooked. I mean, I mean, our communities can be used for labor, for economic you know, reasons or whatnot, right? But when it comes to decision making process, that very much affects our lives. Coalition is going to be a very strong way and with other communities too, that it's not just a Vietnamese problem, it's not just a Mexican mm -hmm. problem, it's like a community of color problem. One of the things that I like about this is that um, one of the bases for the coalition could be, could be a group of very different people who just normally don't get hurt in the political process coming together because they're tired of that. Yeah, that's really good. Anything else under why we would build Coalitions. I'm going to add one more. When I was in college, um, I was part of the ethnic studies fight at Stanford. And um, African American studies had already been instituted at Stanford, and we were a group of students who were fighting for Asian American, Chicano, and Native American studies. And um, one of the things that the administration was really good at was they're like, oh, well, if we have all these other new programs, well, we're going to throw African American studies in there, and then you guys aren't going to have your own office space anymore. And oh, you might get some of your funding cut. Oh, we all have to share. You know, we have limited resources. And something that actually happened was that African American students started fighting against general ethnic studies because they were worried about losing classes, professors, funding. And um, it happened a lot where, like, things like the administration be like, oh, the Asian American students are more organized this time, so we'll offer you guys a professor, but we won't organize the Chicago students that haven't been as active a professor, things like that, right? So another advantage of a strong coalition is that they don't start to fight over crumbs on a table, but they actually just start fighting together for a bigger piece of the pie, like not, you know, not getting caught up in, in the other side of the messaging, right? So I think that's another thing about coalition building to think about. Okay, so how much more? Oh, yeah. Um, I just wanted to add that it really uh, gets us to understand each other more. Like, every country has this feeling that they're better, that they're the center of the universe. I was in class. Um, so uh, every different ethnicity will think that they're better than the other ethnicities. And this is an opportunity to get to know other ethnicities and really, like, kind of understand each other more and come together as one. Okay. Yeah, that's, a, that's a real kind of nuts and bolts kind of yeah. uh, advantage of meeting other folks, uh, whether it be other Asians, other uh, immigrant people, or just other um, people in general uh, when it comes to working in coalitions. Is, there's real relationships that can get developed. And um, I'll, I'll just say
say it right now. So we're, we're talking about coalition, which um, I think is good from a network. A network doesn't necessarily have to be political. A network can be social, it can be cultural, it can be based on a lot of the same things that a coalition is based on, around race, around your gender, around your class, around an, an issue. But a network, you get a network, you might get this a lot. You know, better understanding of people, you make new friends, but you might not have like you might not gain political power from a network. You might not uh, you know uh, get, get 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 your voice uh, get your issues out there more. And they serve different they they, they serve very different um, objectives. I just wanted to put that out. There. Well, this, you know, like I'm gonna have greater power, 
and then therefore there's going to be other folks that are going to want a piece of this or that around this issue. Um, but um, it also kind of like we don't have time to do this, but it also kind of we, we can also do like what are the, do do the do the positives outweigh the the, the, the challenges or the negatives and so forth. And like Jake said, it, it can work for you or it can shoot us. Is that what I erase all of this? Yeah. I'd be curious to hear like you know given your experiences uh, both building coalitions, how you overcome some of those challenges, particularly some of the
we're gonna like that's gonna be the last agenda item. You know what I'm saying? Whereas other organizations are like, you know, this is a greater priority to, uh, to us. And so there's there's that thing that happens. But um, but that's the challenge, and that's something that we we uh, continually uh, try to work on. What we see we do what what we see that we do is we bring in like this is our mission. Like we bring in API perspective to the anti-war movement. And then we bring an API, API uh, no, sorry, we bring an API perspective to the anti-war movement, which is mostly white in the United States. And then we bring an anti-war movement to the API community. So that's that's how we see uh, us functioning. So I, there's other groups that I belong to, but I felt like that would be the best example. Five minutes left. All right. I'm going to try to rush through three different things. I'm going to write down. And 
then, um, you know, there's this whole, like, all these students are fighting around, you know, bringing affirmative action back. And these two women uh, brought together a lot of Asian Americans and Latinos and Native Americans because one person was Latina and the other person was South Asian. But the thing was that they brought these people together and nobody really realized that they were roommates. And, like, they lived together. And, like, just having that kind of relationship kind of, you know, the second year after they graduated, that, that coalition dissolved, right? That's a huge, I don't even know how to address that for student organizing. <laughs> but it gets better once you leave college, because then you're probably going to go to a city or a neighborhood where you're going to be there for a, a length of time. And that's where I found, like, that's where I've learned a lot more about coalition building. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is kind of what I've done in San Francisco. So I'm part of this group called the San Francisco People's Organization. And one of the major advantages of working in a coalition that's based on the locality is that people live there. And most likely, if they're in the group, they're going to be there for a long, long time. Maybe until they die. <laughs> so um, one, of the, one of the things that I thought, I mean, I found really important in developing as a few is before this organization even launched, huh? Um, this group formed actually at the mayor's race. Matt Gonzalez ran for mayor in San Francisco in 2003, and all these crazy people came together, like different groups, different communities, Latino, Asian American, African American, a lot of white people. And, uh, and like it was crazy, like every day people were out on the street and people were excited about this potential of this guy becoming mayor that had no money and like came from a really progressive background. Um, he eventually lost only by two percentage points, actually. And the group completely dissolved, and everyone's like, you know, coalitions are always built around these emergencies, right? Like Prop 54, you know, Schwarzenegger's governor's race coming up now, and then, um, and then the coalition is totally gone. So one of the reasons why SFPO started was that all these people that that came together, like, we got to keep this going all the time. How do we build an organizational structure to keep us together? It's kind of similar to um, APIs against war. And so we went through two years of talking and discussion and development, and the group as a whole came together and developed a structure, which was um, we had identity caucuses. Sorry, I'm really rushing through this. Um, and so in this group, we had um, LGBT. You guys know what LGBT, right? LGBTQQ. <laughs> um, we had people of color. We had women. We had um, people of faith. We had um, youth, seniors, disabled, and we had community-based organizations, and we had unions. And we developed this board of directorship where everyone would get two seats, and CBOs got five, and unions got five. And we planned this huge convention. Everyone invited their own committees to come out. And like 400 people came in San Francisco and they invited them to these caucuses, like whatever they thought their identity was. And they discussed like their important issues. Uh, this is something else that I think is really important. It, within, within coalitions, you have to come from a strong community as part of a coalition. Like a community has to be together too. Um, so like if you're working in an API coalition, I think it's important that we also be strong within themselves. You know what I'm saying? To come even together to the table with another group and start negotiating for your community. Um, so all these caucuses came together, they met two hours to talk about what their priorities were for the city, and then they elected two people that they thought would represent them fairly well to like kind of represent them on this board. Um, and and then um, and then brought all these platforms together and kind of tried to unite them. Now living in a city like San Francisco, we had common issues. And I think it's so important that people have common issues, whether it was affordable housing, employment. In San Francisco, market rate housing is a huge thing. Communities are getting pushed out right now. Everyone shares that in common. So you have to have common issues that you all care about. Um, and that's kind of how we came together. Now this board that I'm a part of, it has about like 23 members. And I must have skipped some caucuses. And um, you know, people are anywhere from 16 years old to like 60, 70 years old. It's a crazy coalition. And uh, one of the things that I spent the most time doing this year is just making sure that, like, after every board meeting, we go to a bar afterwards and hang 